Hello everyone, it's Adam Stolfer here again, ready for take two. I've already done one commentary. And uh, this is uh, Michael Hadgen. Uh, I was also involved in the 1997 filming of Terminator War Against the Machines. Our very first film and uh, this is going to be an interesting experience because we haven't seen it for some time and uh, we don't watch it. It's, it's a little bit too hard to watch these days, isn't it Michael? Oh yeah, it's tough to watch but uh, it was quite an achievement at the time and uh, we're very proud of it but uh, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit tough to watch these days. We're just going to have to do some filler here because uh, this sequence, we're just trying to explain the entire Terminator story to the audience before the film even starts. Uh, How about we start with, okay, so what, what did you do, you do on the film, Adam? <laughs> okay, well, first of all, I was lucky enough to play the Terminator, which was, uh, which was an enjoyable. Um, but I also wrote and directed the film, and it is my very first credit. The very first film that any of us ever made, so it was, it was enjoyable, let's put it that way. Yeah, and I suppose I'm the, uh, I'm the second title uh, in, in the uh, movie, Adam was the main character, and I was uh, Reese, uh, Sergeant Tepcom, or whatever it was. Um, I was also <laughs> involved in uh, writing the film, co-produced, did some fantastic special effects and uh, makeup effects in this movie and uh, also some great sound effects from the video games we were playing at the time. <laughs> in fact, I think most of the sound effects were from either video games or from film. Oh, yeah. I think. Uh, if you listen closely, yeah. there's a bit of Mortal Kombat, uh, a bit of, I think, Warcraft as well. So. Yeah. The, these titles are, are horrible, by the way. Like, that is the worst font I've ever seen. In fact, there was a reason we had to put those two dots there. Uh, something to do with the video editing equipment we were using at the time. But well, that's a very good point. remember. Yeah, that's a very good point we should actually mention right off the bat, Michael, is that uh, this whole film was edited with two VCRs. We had no editing software, nothing of the sort, and uh, this is the best that we could do. Yeah. Jack Greenwood. I don't even know where the name Jack Greenwood actually came from. It just probably sounded know. like it a massive lack of creativity there, given the other characters, John. Now, I just want something off the bat. I just want to mention here is: Do you remember, Michael, that we actually the entire opening for the film was missing? Like we had this big long shot, like through the house, which eventually came into the bedroom here, and we did this. The whole title sequence was meant to be over the shot, and we actually cut the whole thing. Do you remember That's that? right. I was walking alongside the cameraman the whole time, guiding him. And actually, the first word, if you listen closely, early, it's past it now. But the first word is you hear me saying "door," where I was warning the cameraman not to bump into the door. <laughs> so when you watch it again, just look out for it. And this is our special lighting effects here to create the uh, light storm outside. Fantastic uh, light switching on and off there. <laughs> and this is my brother Luke playing uh, Jack Greenwood here. Yeah, which it looks a lot like uh, some of the other houses you see in this movie, which are all the same house. That's right. Now, I don't know, was there any debate back 10 years ago, Michael, whether or not you and me were going to arrive naked? I can't remember. Was there? A... I don't think so. Back in year 11, I don't, I don't think there was an option there. These days, it might have been different, but uh, no. You're coming fully clothed in the denim. There was no See, two not, ways about it's it. It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, Skynet's choice of wardrobe, like you know, like big uh, bloodstone boots, leather. Also, quickly, what I'll mention there: the smoke coming out of that shed is actually Adam's dad uh, flaming some leaves on a barbecue there. So, <laughs> pretty good, pretty good stuff. Their dad came in very handy oh, in yeah. the making of this film. Adam's dad's actually a production designer, so yeah, he knows he knows a few things about movies. Yeah, here's Luke playing a completely different character. And there was an ongoing joke about the, uh, the janitor and his weapons. I think I spoke a little bit about that on the other commentary, but uh, <laughs> the fact that he's carrying a gun always seems to get a bit of a laugh. Oh, he's a major player. <laughs> and these, these visual effects are astounding. That is just amazing right that's, there. Uh, that's some crazy torchlight going on there. And that's supposed to be the light storm for you arriving. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now, this is, this is actually uh, down the road. In fact, most of this film was shot in about a one kilometre radius, but th this is just down the road from where I live. This is yeah. Surrey Hills Primary School. I remember um, my mum telling me to ask permission to film on the school grounds, but we didn't ask permission to film anywhere. <laughs> nah, did we? no way. Well, hey, listen to this sound. Style. Mortal Kombat? Mortal Kombat? <laughs> <laughs> Both the actual the uppercut sounds when you when you uppercut somebody. So there you go. Mortal Kombat 2, in fact. And how's this, Michael? You're, the wardrobe they've chosen for you, they still have jeans in the future. Look at that. They still have jeans and good old Aussie Japara there. Dries a bone, I think. Did that belong to my dad, like, years and years ago or something, I think? I think so. And here's the, here's the old Toyota Prado. Yeah, Janet does, does pretty well for himself. <laughs> You've obviously been driving a lot of vehicles in the future and... Yeah. 
Yeah. Now I am 16 here, so yes, there's uh, Adam's dad again, stunt driver for the movie. He got credited. He's all good. Yeah. Oh, you can, I think he can hear you laughing. I think you can actually hear me laughing <laughs> when uh, Luke goes over the fence there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, Michael really would have liked this scene to have been removed from the uh, new version of the film as well. But, um, you know, we had to set up John Connor somehow, yeah. didn't we? You need we? the whole character development shot, shot I understand. <laughs> All the, uh, the contrast and everything was really way out. I'm shooting this as well. So like, it's so washed out. It's so washed out, yeah. And that football was really flat as well, if I remember. <laughs> like, it, that's not pumped up or anything. We gave, we gave like, really flat football. Yeah. Oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> See, this is back to the Terminator. Look at look at this uh, intimidating figure. This seventeen-year-old here. Look at him. Oh yeah. And his 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 vehicle of choice is this old. That's uh, a fantastic-looking car there. This uh, <laughs> Nissan Pulsar. Jesus, did you really break that glass? Yeah, look, it's a clean break. <laughs> <laughs> that is so clean. Yeah, and see, with the new version, we were able to imply with the new sound as well that he hotwires the car, but there's no implication there at all. The keys could have been there for all, was, <laughs> for all we know. <laughs> oh, and there's a really funny bit, which was actually cut out of the new one here as well. My brother, actually, you see him start to walk in yeah. one direction, and he changes his mind halfway through the walk. Watch this. Yeah, watch this. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> now... If we were prepared to walk one kilometre from this venue where we shot this exterior shot here, we could have actually used a real gun store. But, but we... in fact, we use a model train store, rails and things, as you can just see above the doorway there. And this is, uh, this is Don Milne playing one of his first of eight characters or something. And we're back using Stolfo's house again, actually, in this scene. Yeah, here we are in the, we're in the midst of Surrey Hills. In Luke's bedroom. Now, where did all those guns come from? Um, various spots. The one he's holding I actually got in uh, Universal Studios a long time ago when they actually sold replica guns. You'd never find one these days. No way. And uh, the one behind him there is actually an air rifle which features extensively in the movie. You can also see there's a, um, there's a, <laughs> my brother's old Pamela Anderson calendar up there like on the wall, like behind where Don's standing off the oh, screen man. there. Sign of the times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very plastic looking gun, that one I just picked up then as well. No expenses spared in this uh, scene. <laughs> and here comes the one-liner. Ooh. <laughs> Funny tidbit there. Don actually broke the wall. I think not in that shot, but the shot we. I think you see the, it on the first bloopers. take in the bloopers. Yep. <laughs> the car is so obviously. Uh, see, it's. We've, Ooh, bad plastic sounds there. Yeah, yeah, very bad plastic <laughs> sounds. Yeah. There's a really bad cut here between this and the moving shot. Have a look at this. Yeah, because obviously Adam's <laughs> dad drove the car in and then we had to cut and put me in the driver's seat so I could jump out. So This is a uh, gorilla filmmaking at its best. Oh, yeah. Did we mention this was all crash edited on a VHS? Yeah, we did. I, I mentioned that ah, at the start. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> the sound there's a, is terrible. There's a great cut there as well. <laughs> <laughs> this film is full of great cuts. All this stuff is borrowed straight out of the original Terminator film, you know? Like, nothing, nothing much original going on here. Although this piss guy was, um, was based on the teacher of ours that we had back, yeah. in, back in high school. Good old Mr. Boys, a fat Scottish guy who apparently liked his beer. So pretty much every word this guy says is based on uh, this teacher at school. Actually, down here in Union Road, which is uh, near where my, where my parents live these days, this, this actually looks quite different, this area where we shot this now. If you actually drive past it now, it looks very different. Yeah. See, that, that, that whole scene was right out of the Terminator, wasn't it? Like, yeah. There was a scene where he just throws a guy off a telephone box for no reason. Yeah. Even but, his response, you got a serious attitude problem, straight out of Terminator. If you see that Adam has actually already got his finger on the page he's going to. <laughs> you know what? I think, I think, I think I the, new, the new version actually disguised that a bit because of the, yeah. uh, the new framing. Oh, I think was, we were... Yeah, 16.9. Yeah. Yep. I was never happy with the music that was playing in this scene. I was glad when we were able to go back and change it. I don't know why. It just, it just sounds a little overly dramatic. And a lot of the T2 tracks aren't very appropriate for this film, I, yep. I found as well, which is so... 
Now, this is the cameraman James Madison's cousin coming up here, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Bri Bryce, I think. Yeah, Bryce was. Marshall. And that scream there was actually from Terminator 2, and I believe somebody gets thrown and across and he, the... Uh, here, come, here comes you, Michael, was the wrong John Connor. Yep. <laughs> you know that, that shot of me where I'm standing there shooting at you on the ground? The reason I haven't got the right facial expression is because I was using a cap gun, and the caps weren't working. That's right. And my expression, and really I'm out of character, but we left it in the film. <laughs> Like, my expression is one of disgust that my gun isn't working, you know what I mean? Like, more so than the Terminator stare, so... And we have John Connor sitting in what looks very much like Jack Greenwood's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> but us being very sneaky, shot it from a different angle, so you'd never know. I do apologise about the visual quality in this, this scene coming up. Um, this is a, all originally from a VHS master, and the tape, unfortunately, just... 10 years of storage or whatever has just degraded really Whoa. badly and so i do apologize about that but it, it's unrepairable unfortunately unless we could track down the original footage from uh, the old master tapes that james madison appeared to lose or tape over were, i don't I know think what they happened were taped over with a wedding of some sort yeah anyway the reason that a lot of this scene got cut in the new version of the film was because of the, the visual quality yeah it's my voice there you, you, you've got to pop up in numerous parts, Michael. <laughs> it looks so bad, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that shot of you arriving is completely unnecessary because, first of all, you can't tell where you are. Yeah. <laughs> you're, just, you're just walking through just, a... Yeah, you know, walking through a gate. Yeah. <laughs> so that gate looked a lot like uh, the first John Connor's gate there. <laughs> <laughs> oh... David hates that shot, by the way. David, the guy playing John Connor there, like, just can't stand the way that we just held on him. Who is Adam's cousin? I'm not sure if you mentioned. Sure, it's been mentioned somewhere. Jeez, the, the pace... I'm just, just watching this now. The pacing of this version is so slow compared to the new version, oh, isn't yeah. it? Listen to the tension building here as well, Michael, with the score and the... Oh, it's pure tension. Yeah. I think David says something here about we've got to sneak past him, but we've got to be careful yeah. because I've got to look after my knee or something like that. Like just implying that he, he That's true, he did hurt his knee. Yeah, in the uh, in the scene with the football at the start. Yeah. yeah. Can't watch. <laughs> now the whole reasoning behind the fact that you're able to actually knock me off my feet here, Michael, with the handgun is very funny because it, it seems that you're, and you need to use the rifle in order to knock me over. Um, except for this scene where we needed to buy you some time so you get, yeah, you get <laughs> movie license. That what it, that's what it is. John McConnor is actually smiling in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic acting. Yeah. And, is, and as you'll notice later in the movie, there'll be about five people plowing into him with handguns, and it won't even like budge him and. That one just happened to knock, knock you over you there. Got a so. lot, you guys got a lot of time here, Michael, you know? like and, and Of course, we didn't know anything about how to shoot an action scene. I yeah. mean, the whole thing that makes an action scene work is all the quick cutting, and essentially we, we've just got very minimal shots here, and they last for quite a long time. <laughs> here we so, go. Greatest autofocus in the movie. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this looks very realistic here when you back the car into me. Yeah. I like the smoke there. Oh, this Oof. is the best shot here with the smoke. This shot here. Oh, yeah. That one. Oh. All over my uh, body there. Oh, look at that Ooh, lighting. bright. <laughs> my eyes. I don't know why I was walking like that. I don't know if I was su supposed to display a bit of damage or battle damage <laughs> of some sort. I don't know. <laughs> a couple of bullet shots. Yeah. <laughs> Soft as Terminator. <laughs> Here comes Don again. I, I don't even know why we decide to use these little side characters. It's just another excuse to get him in the film again, I think. Yeah. Like, asking the Terminator for a life. Well, I suppose he was an assistant director and was there every night, so, you know, it'd be kind of boring if he didn't star in a few scenes. Look, it's much too dangerous for you to be anyway, this is going to get kind of boring now. Um, yeah. Because when we decide to do some dialogue. Um, well, it's a little less than perfect. Yeah, and I either had a plate or braces in at the time throughout most of this movie, so you if, can't understand much of what I'm saying. If you look closely, this shot's actually the only shot that's in widescreen. Oh, that's right, we had the camera in the wrong mode. <laughs> I don't know. 
how had James made those mistakes, to be honest. I don't know why he had to change anything, but... Ah, oh, well. And here we are at the church. The last you see of him. <laughs> that establishing shot shows me nothing. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> as, as far as I'm concerned, that was just showing, like, you know, that, that we're somewhere and there's a road there and, you know. So this is a church on the corner of, what is it, Canterbury and Warrigal Road, and um, this particular location gave us a lot of, a lot of grief. We, seen, we we filmed a few things here, and on certain nights we'd arrive and the whole, car, whole ground would be covered in cars and we'd lose a whole night of filming. And I think a couple of occasions... It's funny how you choose a location you go, yeah, we'll shoot here and it'll be perfect. And, you know, it, it, it made for some, some perfect sound and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with those cars nearby. It just looks so big in this movie, but in fact, it's quite a small area. Film and video overall, though, can be quite deceptive yeah. with, with size. Was that your idea, Michael, to put in the dialogue coming up here about that the Terminator can bleed, sweat, and fart? Yeah, I think something we found funny at the time. <laughs> as Jeez. were a lot of things that happened to have been cut out in the 2007 edition. Most of this stuff, with the exception of the gun, was actually in my dad's boots. So we just had you, like, yeah. kind of fiddling around with it. This is real crap in the Stolfo wagon. <laughs> and this it was actually my mum's air gun when she was a little kid. Which I think we've pretty much rooted through this movie having, by stuffing it with talcum powder. Yeah, having that having that gun though was one of the more impressive things that we did use ah, yeah. on this film. Like the muzzle smoke effect, fantastic. So every let me get this correct because I never got to fire that gun. That was your gun. Every time we did a shot with you firing it, you filled it up with talcum powder that you had on the side or something. Yeah, I'd Is have that... a funnel and some talcum powder and just uh, pour it down the muzzle and uh, close it up, and she was good to go. Because some shots it actually looks really impressive. It did. I think it started to get a bit weaker towards the end of the movie where I think we've probably clogged up a lot of the gun with talcum powder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this chase. Jeez, he was trying to get away then, wasn't he? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> There's just some editing here that you just don't do in filmmaking, like this cut to the next shot. <laughs> you don't yeah. cross the line like that. It just confuses audiences as yeah, to where you're standing. The line. And this whole film, so much of it is set at night, just like the original Terminator. But the only thing from memory that we used to light it was the light that was actually on the camera, didn't we? Yeah, that's correct. And that's why some shots just look so bad, because we're just too close. And I'm not sure if we used an extra torch in a couple of scenes, but no, I don't think so. So here we're just trying to explain the entire Terminator backstory, yeah. which people really do know. And so... Really, <laughs> and if they don't, they probably can't hear it anyway. So, <laughs> not sure why we bothered. <laughs> really, we had to show that uh, you know. I mean, he's already tried to run off. So essentially, you're just trying to calm him down. You know what I mean? Just telling him the story of the future and the war. And, and if you happen to look at the bloopers reel, the, the, these scenes did put me through a lot of punishment. You hated doing this stuff as well, Michael. You know, like you did get all the <laughs> did we just cross the line again there <laughs> you did get all the hard lines you know like, yeah there's a lot of bloopers of your work <laughs> <laughs> if you remember this was actually reshot on a different night because the original footage here was just too close to you and it was way too bright yeah so we actually went back another night and actually did some pickups especially these ones and I was incredibly happy to do that and this is the line that took you about 8 takes oh yeah but uh, lucky for us, we're coming up to another action scene, which is what this film's all about. Yeah. Boring. <laughs> I love the way the Terminator just wanders the streets and just happens to find us. Yeah. He's, he's, he's not even using his car anymore. Yeah, what happened to his car? Do I ever use it again in the movie? I'm not sure why I ditched it there. I'm sure it was perfectly functional. I don't know. <laughs> just one of the many plot holes in this film. Maybe he's out of gas. He just lost his wallet, did he? So he lost his whole five bucks or whatever he yeah, had. Yeah, so if you remember, that was a wallet that was dropped outside his house. So the Terminator's got it on him, probably right now. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what those cars are driving past were thinking. Yeah, you'd never get away with this these days. No way. There's well, some there beautiful talcum powder effects there. That looks, that looks pretty cool, yeah. I have to admit. Now, why the Terminator doesn't go around to the side of the car and start shooting me up here is just totally yeah. beyond me. I mean, he had an open door, open slather. And John Connor could be dead right now. Instead, I'm, I'm trying to have pot shots blindly through the roof of the yeah. car. Meanwhile, the car is surrounded by windows. 
He makes a break for it. Great shot coming up here. Oh, this is one of our favourites. Fantastic smoke effect. And the shadow and everything looks great. That's a very Undertaker. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know the, you know the wrestler? You know the, the Undertaker, the wrestler, the WWE? Yep. He sits up like that, like when he gets knocked out. Like, you know, I don't know if that's that, 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 that sit up then that I did was inspired by that. <laughs> This is where you shoot me in the eye as well, isn't it, Michael? Yeah. There goes the eyeball. Of course, we're not going to show you that effect just yet. It looks like another dead end. So seriously, the Terminator's a sook. Why would he just walk away now? You know what? You could actually argue exactly the same thing about the original Terminator. Yeah? Well, think about it. You know that scene where he gets shot in the eye and he's chasing him in the police car? Oh, he just gives up. And he, he, I think it's in his programming that if he... he for whatever reason, the eyeball was was uh, affecting his vision or something like that. I think it's in his programming to go and sort of regroup, sort of repair the damage and regroup. Yeah. So really, although it sounds pretty stuffed, essentially that's just following the original Terminator as well. Here we are in uh, Adam's parents' ensuite. Do you remember the shooting this night? I do. Like, cause there was yeah. a lot of setup time, especially for that first shot with me with the with the shut up eye and all the bullet holes and that's right a bit of fun cutting the holes in that t-shirt and getting blood everywhere and, and, and that fake blood I remember was really really sticky because it was actually a homemade substance do you remember that yeah I like, think James made it actually yeah so all that fake blood that's all over like you know my actual chest behind the t-shirt there in some of those shots um, highly viscous stuff there's already blood in the uh, <laughs> water there by the way just to point it out another thing that we were able to fix up in the new one <laughs> framing is so important <laughs> now the sound coming up here was from Warcraft. It was actually this boiling mud sound that I wrapped <laughs> over and over. And did you come up with this fake eyeball? Was this your idea? Like, yeah, I, I think that came out of a model head I had. Was it from a doll or something? That yeah, eye? it was from this plastic head that you can pull apart, and it had a lean sides of the heads. So that was just some rolled up toilet paper there, I think. I think it still looks as disgusting as ever, though. Yeah, if you look in the bloopers, we tried to drop the plastic eye in there, but it just sort of floated away and looked very fake. <laughs> and I think we just... We're using footage from the original film here. No, I slaved hours on this special effect. And boy, it comes that. through. It comes through really well. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think anyone blames us for using it. <clears throat> Just like the original Terminator, it was just an excuse to change outfits, I think. I think that's why you... Uh, yeah. I think it was just get out of the uh, crappy old denim and change into the leather and wear the sunglasses. He really is the uh, word in fashion from the future. <laughs> Look at this. You know, those, those leather pants belonged to my, um, my auntie's boyfriend. And um, <laughs> there were certain shots in the film from now on where I was actually just wearing black jeans because... If I'm like lying on the ground or whatever, I didn't want to rip, rip his pants. <laughs> Another great plastic. <laughs> That's the sound of plastic uh, machine gun on toilet seat. <laughs> That's one of my favourite sounds for the feel that. It sounds so fake. So now, am I just looking for another... Looking for a, uh, another address or maybe one of his friends. It's just another avenue to come and get you again after yeah. I just chickened off last time. Remember the first time we filmed this, we misspelled a dress. <laughs> go back and film it again. If you look closely on the left there, Don was actually walking oh, past right. again. That was just, seriously, just another way of getting him into the film again and again. And you can't hear that dialogue, but essentially what you said was that it's too dangerous to be back here. And he goes, if you don't want the Terminator to get my wallet, that could be, that could be really really bad or something, I don't remember. Ooh. Oh, this effect? How, how did we do that, Adam? <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> <laughs> it was a torch with, I don't know if it, was it a red torch or did it put something red over it? I don't remember. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you want to talk about this shot here coming up? This well, one. Adam's just standing there. <laughs> That was Fantastic. shot really late in production. That was a pickup, <laughs> like really late. It was like, I don't know, let's just get a, a shot of me just, just standing there. Standing, yeah. Oh, there's the car. Yeah. So I've just like left it there. I don't use it anymore either. Until, and then the one time that I do want to use it later in the film, uh, 
is because the cops have got it. So it's just sitting there the whole time. And the only time I actually want to use it is when someone else wants to use it. Yeah. Jeez, it's like a spoiled little kid or something, isn't it? Only wanting something when, like, you know, someone else is using it. And you just feel like going for a walk and you roam the streets for a while. <laughs> this is Robert Arkenstein. Someone we went to high school with and just... Th this this whole sequence coming up, one of the most popular sequences yeah. from our screenings. Had a lot of ago. cameos of, you know, people we went to school with. I'm actually going to put out a mistake. Seeing that, like, mirror right behind him there, I'm actually standing there in my black. Can you see me? That's my jacket. I in the, can just see Yeah, it. I'm just standing there in the background and here's me there coming in the window. Uninvited. <laughs> Some people found it quite funny that the way we're playing the song, Staying Alive, just as he gets shot. Is that what I mean? so, oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't even remember if that was intentional. And if you just recognise that, that was a gunshot we saw earlier. <laughs> oh, there's... <laughs> now, this is Reflection City coming up. This is a great sequence, like, ripped off the uh, the police station massacre from Terminator, but... Um, He's got a bit more bloodlust here. He's just sort of going off the uh, beaten path and just killing people for the hell of it. There's Ross. Oh, these high school haircuts are completely... This is nostalgia at its best. I'm not sure there are 10, 16 year olds living in a house, but... And why none of them... over that. None of them seem to care that... Uh, Fantastic these... shot here. Oh. Oh, that's one of the highlights of the movie. <laughs> Here's Andy. Look at this acting. See, Andy just refused to die properly. Watch this. We have to show him how to do it. <laughs> it took a lot of work. There's Damon. Remember that Damon fell over about five times? That's because I kept laughing and ruining the shot. So I'm not sure where that guy actually walked from because there's just a window <laughs> on the other side there. So. <laughs> he, he wasn't there before. Oh, look at these reflections. There's these reflections. There's me and there's a cameraman. <laughs> oh, look at, look at your tough guy here, Michael. Oh, yeah. Watch this. Oh, jeez. It's a, it's a white t-shirt under the Japara there. Yeah. Yeah. And now Ross decides, oh, hang on, I better do something about this. <laughs> and are my eyes when he gets hit by the uh, by the knife here. That's, uh, who's that referencing again? Is that from um, oh. Hot Shots, I think? Adi McGraw, my eyes. Yes. Is yes. that where it comes from? I think it features in both of them. There's more reflections. There's blood on the knife there as well, isn't there? Aye. Bit of blood. Another and Don Milne getting murdered. Taking a shit. And here's, here's uh, Kempo. Or Nick. Pizza Man. <laughs> Unfortunately, he got cut out of uh, the other version of the film, so you might as well enjoy this while, while, you, while you can see it. A bit of trivia, the music you can hear is uh, Captain Freedom's workout from The Running Man. I don't know why we use that piece of music, to be honest, but... <laughs> We couldn't afford. Oh, we couldn't actually afford pizzas. If you saw the speed at which those pizza boxes fell down, yeah. and I don't know why I didn't kill him either. I mean, I killed everyone else. I just seemed to check him out and then just walk yeah. straight past him. Actually, that was more more accurate of what the Terminator would have actually done. <laughs> <laughs> and that is so not the uh, front of the house we just saw just before. Yes, it's uh, <laughs> the house next door. <laughs> We better use a different property. We'll just go next door. And this is back in the park that you saw at the start of the movie, but it's uh, you can't tell because it's, yeah. just, it's late at night and a bit more dialogue for the sake of it. Yeah, you say something. I don't know what, what why this scene's in the film, but I think it's just more talk about the Terminator essentially. Yeah, I more... suppose we needed to break up the action a bit. It's a little bit more backstory. In retrospect, I don't know why we bothered, but you know. And here comes um, a scene that we chopped out as well. <laughs> Remember the yeah, birds here might... along Union Road, every night without fail, there are birds and they just chirp and chirp and chirp. And we decided to film in this exact location for God knows what reason. Maybe, maybe the used car place there looked good. I don't know. No idea. There are the birds there. And this is where the scene that with the, uh, the two prostitutes was taken out. Although that originally, 10 years ago, when we originally put the film together, that scene was actually intact. But we never liked it, and it's, it's, it's probably one of the worst things that we've ever shot, Yeah, I think. So really, this but, is a 1997 version, minus the hooker scene. You're not missing much. Although this one does have end credits. We never had end credits originally as well. True. 
all these lines that Don sang here, like I can hear people talking and there's people still conversing yeah. and stuff. It's all Mr. Boyce. Yeah. And he actually said this stuff in that accent. So obviously he was a bit of a popular character with the school kids we showed this to. This film did really, got really good response oh, when, yeah. when we showed it 10 years ago. Do you remember we got um, everyone to fill in like surveys like of what they thought of the film and and uh, we asked some questions about what they yeah. if they if they <laughs> if they were following the story and stuff like that. There's uh, Jack Greenwood. It's all over him. He was playing the Super Nintendo. He's dead. <laughs> I think I still have that Super Nintendo. Really? Yeah, in a box at my parents' place somewhere. Good times in that game. <laughs> This is all ad libbed, I think, by Don. This was none of this stuff is in the script. No, I think we just pretty much got him to sit there and just crap on. But he's good at it. I think you're doing a lot of laughing here. I think that's why you. Come, <laughs> yeah. I think that's why you're covering up your face. It was very tough containing myself in these scenes. Yep. I think David is too. That's why. That's why he's got his hand in front of his mouth so much. <laughs> I just love the pillow. It's so obviously a pillow. This is one example where rather than me completely blind, blindly walking around the streets, I actually use some sort of tactic to find you. <laughs> and you've got two guns out. Like, half <laughs> conspicuous. <laughs> hey, I but, think even the Terminator hey, has got but, more sense than that. Let me ask you this. Is, isn't most of this film set in the course of one, one night? Yes. So this could be like three o'clock in the morning or something. There could might be. not be that many people around. <laughs> that, that bitch line there got a, got a big laugh. You're here, best, you're, here where I'm holding Don, I am just pissing myself laughing. It was just because of the way Don was dying in front of you, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. And that was the end of my gun there. When Adam dropped it in that exact <laughs> scene, it broke to pieces. Yeah, that sound that you hear is the sound <laughs> of it breaking. <laughs> That's the sound of the gun breaking and everything. Jeez, this is a big, long, drawn-out shot. I don't know why I kicked the bottle. I think it was just an excuse to put it there. And that line there, who says I'm fair, it was uh, straight out of uh, Last Action Hero, I think. Yeah. And also got the uh, chop from the 2007 edition, I believe. Yeah. Listen to that 80s synthesized score there. Oh, it's good stuff. <laughs> it's good stuff. Here we are, Surrey Hills train station. We're jumping all around the place here as well, yeah. regards to the geography. Went down, went back up again. But... I think the film, the film really, you know, hit a good point at this point in the film, you know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. a lot of weak points. This is a good point. I mean, the motorbike and all that's pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, great action scene. Here we have uh, Adam's uncle. Not technically, but... Not technically. He might as well be. He's been around for 13 or 14 years. Yeah. There's not many shots in which you can't tell it's me. I mean, we did shoot it properly, you know. Oh, I think it's, it's pretty good as far as stunt double goes. When I watched this recently, what I noticed about a lot of these shots of you guys running here is, you see, you seem more um, concerned about your own safety than John Connors. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look. A of, Probably because I was. <laughs> a lot of them, you're just, you're just sprinting. <laughs> I'm just like, catch up, John. Jesus Christ, you're an anchor. Yeah. Have a look. Like some of these shots here, like. <laughs> I actually never noticed that before. Oh, it's so I can't help it. It's just like you're just running for your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a cut to me when it's motionless, of course. There's a good cut there. Yeah. <laughs> Still, I like this sequence. But, I, yeah. I mean, it's better than the new version, but I like this sequence. I just reckon it's like, you know, we didn't have any money at all. This is just all favours and, you know, um, Peter here who came out to do the stunt work on the motorbike, he was just doing it out of, you know, out of his own time so yeah so well, that's just pretty cool there goes the motorbike love the way you blow the gun here as well and then you go oh shit <laughs> <laughs> where's John <laughs> oh here's some more cameos coming up back on the same veranda again that's been used about 20 times there's Mark Mark Damon. and his uh, sneakers Damon and Nick and Don in role number six or seven. I can't remember anymore. <laughs> oh, we had to, it was raining. I don't know if you can hear in the sound, it's raining. We had to dub this line that Kempo says to Don here. And it's actually Don speaking to Don. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a really, really good line back then when he goes, who, who do you think yeah, I am? Colombo. 
And um, it's just terrible, isn't it? <laughs> so we're See, back, we're back here again. I don't know how, <laughs> but we're back to John Connor's house you're not really, behind the car that the Terminator do, stole. Do, do you think that you just killed the Terminator? Because you've just sort of stopped. You're hiding. You don't want the cops to see you. We can tell. Oh, yeah. Chris uh, loves this line here. <laughs> hey, Sarge, you see that? Oh, look at those jeans. <laughs> oh, here comes some action. Everyone just grabs you here, Michael. I okay, almost snuck out an F word there. I thought, whoa, this is going to be shown to English cast in uh, year 11. And all the teachers. And, the and all the teachers, yeah, probably wouldn't approve too much. Jeez, that took a long time to recover just then. A very long time. I don't know what damage that, that crash into that pole with the motorbike did, but... Bike's in pretty good shape, though, you've got to admit. I could have just picked it up and yeah. used it again, but... <laughs> you really see the light from the city in the background of that shot as well. Yeah. Oh, dramatic acting there from oh. you, Michael. Look at those oh. eyes. <laughs> this was uh, my favourite scene in the film, though. I don't, I don't know why I liked it so much. I think if this, this was a direct rip-off of that scene from T2 with all the SWAT guys shooting at him. But um, essentially, it's just another another opportunity to get some more action in there, yeah. wasn't it? But as you can see, obviously, their uh, handguns aren't as good as mine, as you'll see in a moment. Oh, but they... Ex I don't... How many clips do they have on them as well? That's what <laughs> I want to know. It's never ending. <laughs> Look at the way Damon's holding the gun as well. Yeah. The, the Reservoir the, Dogs. This stuff. is not like, yeah, I think it, it was a uh, Bad Boys style. Do you remember how we did the uh, the bullet holes on my face as well, Michael? Yeah. We've got little circles of tin foil and sort of surrounded them in fake blood. They look pretty effective. Only in dark lighting. Any, any, any scene coming up I've noticed since uh, watching it again, any scene in the light, it doesn't look so good. Yeah. But in the dark, where the only light that's shining on it is the um, the, the crappy old camera light, it uh, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Just wait for the right moment. Once again, your shotgun did a lot of damage. I've been lying down <laughs> for about five minutes. <laughs> it's a pretty violent film. It really is. <laughs> Don Milne dies again. <laughs> oh, right in the ass. Copped it right in the ass. I think you're a bit inconsistent. Um, <laughs> Do I swap legs at all? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know about swapping legs, but I think I think sometimes you may forget that you've actually got the injury. Like I think yeah. when, you, when, you, the when you run out and knock me onto the train tracks later on, you run very very well for someone who's been shot in the ass. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, this thing doesn't make any sense without the new version. Like, so they've just got into the Terminator's car. <laughs> Am I correct? These are two oh, that's, No, but if you remember, the, 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 the leader, who's now dead, said to them before, like, can you get that car to the station that was spotted one of the crime scenes? Oh, ah, right. So, they didn't hear... Yeah, they, fair enough. They didn't hear any of that commotion outside with all those gunshots. Of course not. And so they're just doing their job. Like, oh, okay, when we're ready and we've finished dusting prints here and stuff, we'll uh, go and take the car to the, uh, to the, to the station. Which, that so, shot right there, Adam went flying into the cameraman and it was a very painful sound. That's on the bloopers, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. There's Ben Houghton. He, he insists that he gets his line, what the hell was that, into every single film that I've made since. And saying it in an American accent. What the hell was that? <laughs> now you've actually done some damage yeah. to me. Well, you didn't do anything. It was Start the cops. To show, starting to show some wear and tear here. The cops had, did the damage to me. They, they screwed up my leg. Well, I'm basically actually managed to catch up with us at that speed. But I guess there I am. Oh, look at you. You look, you look completely out of it there. Yeah. Once again, this is just up the road, isn't it? <laughs> it's not far from where we were shooting everything else. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I did get a bit of a kick walking around in that gear, in that outfit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was good fun uh, down here on the train station where we were heading as well. Do you remember the night? Because uh, we, I mean, we shot down there quite a few nights. So I remember. Do you remember the night where we had to keep stopping because we were filming in the tunnels we had to keep stopping because every time a train arrived all the passengers got off yeah and do you remember when we were asked if we had any drugs that's right this like bogan old lady came up to us and said do you use this guy's chuff 
<laughs> here Adam is dressed up as a Terminator and, <laughs> and you've got, got blood all over I've your got face. Blood pouring out of every orifice. <laughs> we yeah. We declined her um, inquiry. Now, I don't actually know what the Terminator did here in regards to the geography of the place, like how he didn't sort of just follow you around the corner and why he decided to come a different route. Did we sort of ever work that out or it doesn't really matter? No, he just comes out of that door, doesn't he? <laughs> the door's even... He doesn't even come out of the door. He just it's implied just, that he comes yeah. out of the door. Perhaps there's a doggy door under it or something, but because he, he never opens it. I always like that effect. I thought we did well with that, like that point of view shot there. And here we go. See? Hey, here he is. Oh, here comes the farmer. And he gets the pitchfork off. <laughs> Another Don Mill. <laughs> we didn't have anybody else. It was just, it was just at this point, it was just you, me, David, James, the camera guy, and Don. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember doing all these stunts with you. This is a lot of fun, actually. A lot of fun. <laughs> Editing, not so great. <laughs> <laughs> these scenes are hard to edit. Yeah. Remember, Especially oh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Over on the new version, you know, Chris did a, uh, you know, he did a much better job. The scene works a lot better, but it's still not perfect. It's too hard. It just hasn't been shot properly. See what I mean by the bullet holes not looking so great in the light? So surely the Terminator could have done a good job. I love job this. You're so me. close to the gun in that shot, yet so far yeah. away. <laughs> <laughs> so far away. Oh, that's <laughs> a typical movie star. Yep. I don't know what I'm doing there. Yeah, I, might see, well just, I might as well just finish you off. Honestly, you could have finished me off or grabbed the gun and shot I, me. I, why you decide to attack me with your body, I don't know. Like, you know, even you're aware more than anyone in this film that you can't just go hand to hand with a Terminator. Takes a lot of balls. <laughs> see, you might as well be dead there. I mean, <laughs> look at that. I love the trip over the uh, hole here. Some people thought that was a mistake, but I... Yeah. What are they I, it wasn't. I just... It was just in the way, and why would it stop him? Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is Don Milne again, and um, it, he's imitating another teacher from, from high school here as yeah. well, isn't he? Yeah, Mr. Reese, a PSD teacher. Oh, this is the... I don't, why am I looking around that? <laughs> I'm not well, looking at anything. You're purely impersonating Arnie in, in the scene uh, in Terminator 1 where he goes into the cop station. He does that quick look around, doesn't he? Yeah, but I'm not... All I'm doing is getting a ticket. True. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why we thought that would be funny or whatever. So he's gone here and killed the ticket man. Another Mortal Kombat uh, fatality scream, I think. I love that scene. There you go. Remember those tickets? <laughs> yeah, the good old yellow tickets with the uh, little, stand, little holes in them. Jeez, those days are long gone. That really yeah. dates the film. See, this is like big hero moment. I mean... <laughs> you mean knocked senseless by a Terminator. I didn't kill you for whatever reason, I don't know. See, as far as I'm concerned, this is where the film really takes a nosedive. Yeah. As in, like, like this is where every all the quality that we've been building up to before with, like, the police shootout and the motorbike chase and stuff, it all just goes downhill from here, doesn't it? Well, I guess we had a uh, deadline to meet and we had to get this shown to our English classes well, and is this, we had to just rush the I think the by the time, because a lot, a lot of this movie is, I mean, we did shoot out of order like most films are, but a lot of it was actually shot in sequence. It was so, fairly sequential. So a lot of this stuff at the station was shot very late. Yeah. So I think... Uh, this this could have been a couple of weeks before we was we, the, the project was due, so we yeah. just wrapped up like everything like really quickly. <laughs> Someone asked me the other day if this was like you know the first sign that John Connor's like learning to become like you know a big a big a mil great military, military leader. Yeah, but he's bloody good with that gun. Aye. He's been watching you very closely throughout the course of the film. David did love this, doing this stuff, by the way, but we gave him the opportunity to fire guns at the end of the movie because all he'd been doing was just chasing you, essentially. Look at the Terminator eye there. Fantastic work there, Michael. This is the only way we could do slow motion. And look, Michael, no gunshot wound there. Look at him run. <laughs> and we're going to talk a little bit about where we actually filmed the on the train tracks bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was actually back at the church. Why? I don't know. I don't know why we didn't go somewhere with at least some orange lighting or something. I don't know. 
Yeah, we sort of and, didn't and, want and to do what, it on what, the train tracks. Is it, isn't that you with the torch? No, it's, no, it wasn't you. Obviously you were... not me, but somebody. <laughs> See, that should have been the end of the movie right there. Yeah. In fact, you should have died as well. You should have been on the tracks. And I would have liked the double death, honestly. Isn't that a good way? Isn't that the ultimate way you could save the future? Yeah. Because you don't care if you live or die. Although, actually, you do in this movie, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> unlike, unlike Reese in the real Terminator movie, it seems that you are very uh, conscious of self-preservation. Even at the end, I mean, I don't know. First of all, I don't know why the cops come to get you or anything at the end of the movie. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. That they 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 well, assume. Suppose, yeah. Are you taking responsibility for all the Terminator kills? Been, there's been a path of murderous mayhem wherever I go. It's only logical they'd follow me, I suppose. And this down by the side of the train tracks actually was down beside the side of the of the tracks, but like you just can't see because the lighting's so bad. And I'm not supposed to have any legs here or anything. That's the whole idea. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just my upper torso and like one of my arms. I think that was the idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh look at this! Here we go, Nike. And if you remember, that was a pitchfork I stole off the farmer down in the, under the train station. And, and look. Uh, killed the Terminator. So the train didn't do it. All the gunshots didn't do it. But the pitchfork did. It's a pitchfork. Or is it a hoe? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but just getting back to what I was saying about the cops. Like, are you taking responsibility at the end here for all the Terminator's deaths? Is that why you're being arrested and taken to prison? And I suppose so. I guess all the witnesses have been killed. And then, wait now a minute. This is, well, that was a pretty quick clean up there. <laughs> this was definitely the last night of shooting. Yeah. And, we, and I remember the cops arrived this night as well. Do you remember that? Do you remember that incident with the police? That's right. We were near the train tracks and somebody obviously called the cops and reported us. Probably just one of the, one of the people on the properties behind us there. So again, there we were dressed up as the Terminator. Now Adam actually had the, the eyepiece on as well. So the cops bought it. Blown out. So the cops bought it and they, you know, they, they, they asked us a few questions and left. <laughs> Although I remember Don had been up on the train tracks like seconds before they arrived, so we could have got yeah, in trouble. Yeah, we were almost caught. Now, <laughs> these, these cops here aren't the same cops that were killed earlier, right? I mean, one of them is Damon and one of them yeah. is Don, but that's, uh, that's Damon's twin. I mean, why don't we just use that? <laughs> <laughs> They've been looking for you for hours, apparently. <laughs> Listen to this. There's a good little Terminator cameo for you. This is so funny. I mean, this is meant to be, you know, the back of a police car and the, uh, there's the piss guy again. But aren't we just in like my parents' driveway here? If you have yeah. a look, if you have a look, there's like a fence there. And, <laughs> and are we back in your car? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are, that's right. Jesus. Jeez, that blood is starting to look very fake by the stage. <laughs> it's starting to dry out on your face and it doesn't look right. There you have it. Terminator War Against the Machines. And it can live on in the new version. I don't know how many of you actually watched this version, but hopefully enough incentive with the new commentary. Jeez, the credits got quick then. It was amazing. When the uh, Terminator 3 came out, what was the title of Terminator 3? Uh, Rise, Rise of... of the Machines, wasn't it? And this one's called War of the Machines. called War Against the Machines. Amazing coincidence there. Anyway, Michael, it's been great. Reminiscing. Yeah, it's always good watching it again. Very cringeworthy, um, but uh, we imagine most always, of you, always a pleasure. We imagine most of you will be watching the new one from here on in. In fact, we encourage you to. Yes, um, this is uh, yeah. Don't bother. <laughs>